Assalamualaikum. We begin today's lesson with a dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbala. So far, you've been taught that every ism has four grammatical properties and we've discussed three of them. We'll do a quick recap. The first property is gender. Every ism by default is masculine or muzakkar, except for ism which represent real females such as umun, mother, or ukhtun, sister. This group of words I call real mu'annas or real feminine ism. And nine other groups of ism which are considered feminine for various reasons. These nine groups are what I call fake feminine. The most important group of fake feminines are words which end with tamarbuta. So when you see any word ending with tamarbuta, it is most likely a feminine ism, ism mu'annas in Arabic. The second property is number. Ism can be singular, mufrod, dual, muthanna, or plural, jama. Jama in Arabic refers to three or more. The dual ism or muthanna is formed by adding the suffix ani or aini. In the case of feminine dual ism, the ta marbuta becomes a regular ta, so the suffix becomes tani or tiny. As for the plural of ism jama, there are three types to consider. The first is jama muzakar salim, which can be identified because they are ism which end with una or ina. The second group of plural is the jama mu'anna salim. This ism we can recognize quite easily because they will end with atun or atin. And the third is jama taksir or broken plurals. Jama taksir is a little tricky because the structure of the word does not conform to any obvious formula. It looks just like a singular or ism mufrod. You can only tell it's a jamak taksir instead of an ism mufrod by referring to a dictionary for the meaning of the word. The third property of an ism is ikrob. Every ism can be one of these three grammatical status, rafa, nasob, or jar. In simple terms, ikrob is how the word ends. Igrob will change the case marker at the end of the word or the last one or two syllables. In the most basic form, Igrob jar will put a kasroh at the end of an ism. Igrob nasob will change the end to a fatha and Igrob rafa will make the word end with a toma. But unfortunately, Igrob status can't always be easily identified by looking at the case marker at the end of the ism. There are ism which do not change at all under any circumstances. These ism are called ism mabni or inflexible ism. There are ism which may change a little bit under different ikrob status called mabnu minal sof or partly flexible ism. And finally, ikrob status will completely change the case marker or the end of most ism. We call such ism, ism mu'rob or fully flexible ism. We can tell the ikrob status of fully flexible ism or ism mu'rob by studying the case marker or harakat at the end of the ism. In short, for ism mufrod and jama' taksir, if the word ends with fatha, it's nasob. If it ends with kasra, it's jar. And if it ends with bomma, it's rafa. For isim muthana, words ending with aini can be either nasob or jar. And if it ends with ani, it must be rafa. For jama muzakar salim, if it ends with ina, you've got two possible igrob status. It can be nasob or jar. If it ends with una, it must be rafa. And lastly, 
for jama' mu'ana salim. If it ends with atin, it can be nasob or jar. And if it ends with atun, it can only be rafa. Do remember that we will never find any isim mu'ana salim ending with atan that just doesn't exist in Arabic grammar. If you have forgotten the topic of Iqrab, you can refer to the previous Lesson 7 video. Now, you may be wondering, why do we crack our heads learning the four properties of Isim? Why do we need to know if the Isim is Muzakkar or Mu'anas, its number and its Iqrab status? Just like in the English language, Arabic too must adhere to the subject-verb agreement. In fact, the rules are even more stringent in Arabic. For example, Al-Walidatu means mothers. It's an ism jama mu'ana salim, feminine plural. In this example, the verb used must be one which is compatible with the ism jama mu'ana salim too. So, the verb use is yurdi'na. Iqrab is used to make sense of a string of words in a sentence. It will tell you the role a particular word plays in a sentence, be it as an object, a subject, an adjective, to show possession, and many other things. For example, the bomah at the end of the word dawud and the fatah at the end of the word jalut enables us to translate the sentence to and Dawood killed Jalut. Alright, I hope you've acquired some basic understanding of three out of the four properties of Isim. Now, we should be able to tackle the fourth property, definite and indefinite Isim. All Isim can be categorized into either definite or indefinite. Definite isim are called isim makrifa. Makrifa means something known or recognized. Isim makrifa are nouns which, at the mere mention of that isim, one knows exactly what you are referring to. Isim nakira, on the other hand, are indefinite nouns which refer to non specific person, place, things, etc. Now, Let's look at a few examples of Isim Makrifa and Isim Nakira. Ishtara Komiso The sentence Ishtara Komiso means he bought a shirt. We don't know which shirt he bought exactly. We only know it was a shirt. Komiso in this sentence is an Isim Nakira or an indefinite Isim. El Komiso Ezra the second sentence is Al Komisu Azrok, which means the shirt is blue. Al Komis refers to the shirt, the one he bought, not just any old shirt. So the word Al Komis is an isim makrifa because we know exactly which shirt we are talking about. In this example, Kitaban means a book. Any book. We don't know which book he borrowed. The only thing we can ascertain is that he borrowed one book. Al Kitaba can be translated to the book, a particular book. So we know that the book he's reading is the book he borrowed from the library, not any random book. The prefix al in al Kitab changes the isim from isim nakira or indefinite isim to isim makrifa or definite isim. All isim are nakira or indefinite by default unless they fall into one of the following seven groups. The first group of isim makrifa is the group of nouns which start with alif lam makrifa. Alif lam makrifa represents the article the. From the previous examples, we can see that one way to convert an isim nakira to makrifa is by adding the prefix al or the alif la makrifa 
to the start of the word and removing the tanwin at the end of the word. One cardinal rule, any isim which starts with alif lama wifa can never ever end with tanwin. That's because in general, tanwin is a sign that the word is an isim nakira, whereas the alif lam is a sign that the word is an isim makrifa. So, obviously, you can't have both definite and indefinite signs appearing in one word. But not all isim which end with tanwin are nakira. Proper names such as Muhammadun, the name of our beloved Prophet wasallam, has tanwin, but it is still an isim makrifa. Which brings us to the second group of isim makrifa, proper names. The following are a few names which appear in the Quran. Clearly, these are isim makrifa because we know exactly who, what or where we're talking about when these names are mentioned. Earlier, I said that Tanwin is a sign that the isim is nakira or indefinite. But looking at this list, you can see quite a few proper names here ending with Tanwin. Why is that so? That's because proper names need not adhere to the rule. Proper names can be constructed in any way with or without Tanwin. Now we'll learn about the third group of isim makrifa, any isim which comes after half nida. What is harfu nida? It is a particle used to gain attention of a person by calling or addressing him. Nowadays, it will be like calling out hey or yo. The combination of harfu nida and the isim which follows it is a definite isim or isim makrifa. There are lots of harfu nida, but we will focus on one, the harf nida ya, because it's the one most often mentioned in the Quran. The following are examples of harfu nida. <laughs> وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لِمَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ حرف نداء يا cannot be placed before any isim which starts with alif lam makrifa you can't call out ya rasul for example unless you add the word ayuha or ayatuha before the isim with the alif lam ayuha if the isim is muzakkar or masculine and ayatuha if the isim is muannas or feminine for example in surah al kafirun the these believers are addressed as Ya Ayuhal Kafirun. Al Kafirun is an isim muzakkar or masculine isim which starts with Alif Lam. So the word Ayuha is added to the Harfunida Ya. And in Surah Faj, Nafsun is isim muannas. So the, the term Ayatuha is added or by adding a corresponding isim ishara or pointer, like these examples. The only exception to this grammatical rule is when we are calling out to Allah. We can say, Ya Allah, even though Lafzul Jalala starts with Alif Lam. In fact, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, we can see that the phrase Allahumma has the same meaning as Ya Allah. The fourth group of isim makrifa is idofa, in which the second isim is a definite noun. I've discussed idofa in a previous lesson, lesson 2c to be exact. Idofa is a possessive phrase which is created simply by putting two isim together. You can translate 
the idofa to English by placing the word of between the two isim, something of something. The two isim must meet a few conditions to qualify as an idofa, namely, ikrab status of the second isim must be jar, and the first isim must be nakira without any tanwin. Now, what you need to know is that if the second isim is makrifa, the whole idofa becomes an isim makrifa. In the example Rasulullah, lafzu jalala is makrifa, that makes the entire idofa an isim makrifa. Let's look at some examples of idofa in which the second isim is makrifa. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. Abi Lahab is a proper name, a name of a person. It is an isim makrifa or a definite noun. That makes the entire idofa yada Abi Lahab an isim makrifa too. فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ The word لَعْنَةُ is an idwafa in which the second isim is lafzu jalala. Clearly, lafzu jalala is magrifa. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Similarly, the phrase Nasrullah is makrifa because its second isim, Lafzu Jalala, is makrifa. We will compare these with an idofa in which the second isim is nakira. The word zarotin means an atom. As the word is the second part of an idofa, and it is an isim nakira, the entire idofa becomes nakira. We will learn more about idofa in the coming lessons, inshallah. The fifth group of isim makrifa or definite isim is domir or pronouns. The plural for domir is domair. The English equivalent to domair are pronouns such as he, they, her, his, you, your, I, and we. There are two types of domir. The first is domir munfasil or detached pronouns. These pronouns are standalone pronouns. They need not be attached to any word. The second type is domir mutasil or attached pronouns. Attached pronouns, like the name suggests, must be attached or connected to another word. That word can be an isim, a fa'il, or certain half. The following are some examples of detached pronouns in the Quran. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Huwa is the third person singular masculine pronoun, or he in English. Wala ana abidum ma abattum. Ana is the first person, singular pronoun, irrespective of gender. Simply put, Ana means I. Antum is the second person, plural masculine, or you all. نَحْنُ جَعَلْنَاهَا تَذْكِرَةً وَمَتَاعًا لِلْمُقْوِينَ نَحْنُ is first person plural or we, irrespective of gender. The following ayat contain attached pronouns. Notice that the domir can only be attached to the tail end of another word. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ Who is the attached version of the pronoun huwa, meaning he. Who means him or his. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Ka is the attached version of the pronoun anta or you. Ka means you or your when you are talking to one man. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ 
Na is the attached form of the domain nahnu or we. Na means us or our. الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف. The detached and attached form for the third person masculine plural or they is the same. It's whom. Whom can also mean them or their. I don't expect you to remember all the domain now. The only thing you need to know is or domir a isim ma'rifa. We'll come back to the topic of domir in future inshallah. The next group of isim ma'rifa is called isim mausul. What's isim mausul? Isim mausul are relative pronouns used to relate a word before the pronoun to the word after it. They are words like who, which and that. There are many isim mausul. Which isim mausul to use depends on the gender and number of the isim it relates to. For example, we use aladi for singular muzakkar or singular masculine and alati for singular mu'annas or singular feminine. And if the isim is jama or plural, we use the relative pronouns aladina for masculine and allati for plural feminine. Let's see some examples of how isim mausul is used in the Quran. Kuwa means he, a masculine singular isim. Thus, its corresponding isim mausul is the masculine singular form as well, allati. الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات طوبى لهم وحسن مآب. الذين is the masculine plural form of isim mausul. This time, the word it relates to is a masculine plural fi'il. آمنوا meaning they believed. Both the gender and the number of الذين and آمنوا are the same. اتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة. النار means fire. It's one of those words considered مؤنث and the number is singular. Hence, the corresponding singular and feminine isim mausul is used. التي. أختي وأمهاتكم التي أرضعنكم. أمهاتكم means your mothers. A plural feminine isim, just like allati. Isim mausul is one of those groups of isim you will need to memorize in future. We will learn more about them in the coming lessons, inshallah. The seventh and final group of isim ma'rifa is what's called ismu ishara, or pointer words, this and that. Isim ishara are used to point to something near or far. In English. They are words like this, that, these, and those. Just like in isim mausul, the use of isim ishara depends on the gender and number of the isim you are pointing to. If the isim being referred to is singular and masculine, we use hada meaning this for something near, and zalika meaning that for something far away from you. If we are pointing to a singular feminine isim, we use hadhi for the word this and tilka for that. When we are pointing to a plural isim, the English equivalent to the plural isim ishara are these and those. Haulai meaning this and ulaika meaning those are used for both masculine and feminine plurals. We'll study some examples of isim shara. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ means this house. Al-bayt is a singular masculine isim, so the corresponding isim shara is هَذَا. إِنَّ هَذِهِ تَذْكِرَةِ تَذْكِرَةِ is singular feminine because it ends with ta marbuta. 
Thus, the pointer word applicable is هذه. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. The literal meaning for ذلك الكتاب is that book. But this book is the translation here. You will learn much later why this is so. أولئك على هدى من ربهم. أولئك means those and is used to refer to a group of people. In conclusion, all isim ishara are definite isim or isim ma'rifa. We will discuss the topic of isim ishara in detail later, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we've completed studying the seven groups of isim ma'rifa. Before we end this lesson, we'll do a quick recap. Having studied the three properties of isim being gender, number and ikrab in the previous lessons, we now learn that all isim can be classified into two types. They are either definite or indefinite. Definite isim are called isim ma'rifa and indefinite isim are called isim nakira. All isim are nakira or indefinite by default except for the following seven groups. The first, any isim starting with alif lam ma'rifa which is equivalent to the article the. The second group is proper names. The third is any isim placed after harfu nida, used to call someone. The harfu nida you need to be familiar with are ya, ya ayu, and ya ayatuha. The fourth group of isim ma'rifa is any idrofa, in which the second isim is also ma'rifa. The fifth group is Domer or pronouns. This is a list of detached and attached pronouns for your reference. The next group is Isim Mausul or relative pronouns. The English equivalent to Isim Mausul are words such as that, which, who, whom and whose. Their role is to relate the word before them to the word after the Isim Mausul. This is a list of some of the isim mausul in Arabic. The seventh and final group of isim ma'rifa are pointer words, meaning this, that, these, and those. Here's a complete list of all isim ishara for your reference. Inshallah, there will be separate lessons on these four groups to provide you a better understanding of each topic. Eventually, you will need to memorize all Domir, Isim Mausul and Isim Ishara as they appear very often in the Quran and you will need to be able to identify them. But for now, just print out the list of these three groups and have them handy for your reference. The link to the PDF file for this lesson is in the video description. That's more than enough for today. I end this lesson with Tasbih Kafara. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.